and never give up. He said, In a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about men. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with one plea. Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused. But finally he said to himself, Even though I don't fear God or care about men, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out for him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Let us pray. Ever equipping God as I speak, may you increase and I decrease. May the word you have given me for this message be seeds that rest in our hearts, that we might bear fruit for you here on earth. And may I be bold and courageous in speaking what it is you've given me to speak. And may we as your people have ears that hear. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The persistent widow. How many of you are persistent people? What you want, you go for. It's okay. God wants us to be persistent. The widow is, is raised up in this because of her persistence. I wonder in our lifetime if we're as persistent with God as we are with our own selfish ambition. Or our own selfish wish list. This is a... This, this text, is, this parable is directed to disciples who have been told that while the rest of the world is doing their thing, you will suffer. People will hate you, you will be stoned, you will be crucified. And what he's saying to them is, in spite of all that's happening to you in your world, you must continue to pray and speak with God. How many of us do that? Do we get caught up sometimes in our own situations and we just don't think God can see us and we cease our prayer to God? Or we lift up something once and we think that's enough that, that we've told God about it and so we'll just go on our merry way. And we don't become persistent in prayer with God about our suffering because we're worried about filling a, a wish list or bringing our own comfort. Do your prayers look like your grocery list is what you want? And so your prayer list, you go before God with what you want, and you don't care about what everybody else might need. See, the persistent widow, she's projected as the hero in this story, but do you really know who she was? She was a widow, and she was becoming before the community's unjust judge. Didn't fear God, didn't fear man. He was an egotistical judge who did things his way, period. Period. He didn't let faith guide him. He didn't let the influence of others guide him. He made decisions upon his understanding. And before him is a widow. The first question that should come to your mind is why is she before him? Because in biblical times, the instruction is for all people, especially men, to take care of the widows. And if her husband had died, then her husband's brother, right? or nephew, or whomever, should take care of that widow. They should be standing in the court before the judge, pleading this widow's case. But what you see is a person who is completely desperate to be seen and to be heard. And she has taken upon herself a person who is not seen in society, a person who has no standing in ancient times. She had no standing in society. Luke often uses the widow because they're about as low as you can get. He just used the clean, the unclean lepers. Now he's using a widow. And they are the ones who are projected, if you will, hero in the story. The lowest of the low of humanity. A woman who has no inheritance. A woman who has no claim because there's not a man in her life. In ancient times, the man defined who the woman was. And so she's having to plead her own case. She's having to stand before the judge 
who has no just in him. He has he doesn't have any influence. He's not listening to God for an answer. He's just dealing out decisions the way he wants it to happen in the world. But there's something about the widow. I love her. Her tenacity. You ever met a tenacious woman? Whew. Right? You ever she just doesn't quit? Just won't quit. Keeps coming at you, keeps coming at you, keeps coming at you, keeps coming at you. Until she gets what she wants. This woman was tenacious. She was persistent. She knew she wasn't where she was supposed to be according to society's rule. She knew she wasn't. But she didn't quit. She kept coming back again and again and again and again and again and again. And, again and enough that she made an influence on the judge's life. How many of us pray like that? He's telling his disciples that no matter what you're going through in life, never lose connection with God. And bring all of your cares and concerns to God, even if it's the same cares and concerns that you had yesterday, that you have them today. Bring them to God again. Don't quit talking to God. I wonder if that's what we do in our lives. If we could say we're persistent prayers. I'm really being persistent upon praying in my life in a moment, right? I've said this before earlier in some sermons, that when I'm asked to pray for someone, I stop at that moment, and I pray to God. As soon as the request is given to me, and I'm out of the conversation, my next step is to stop and pray to God. You know, if Billy Bob needs an A on his test, and someone asks me to pray for Billy Bob to get an A on his test, I'm going to stop and say, God, I know that you don't play in these games, but I just want to lift up this prayer to you, all right? That you would give Billy Bob the intelligence to do his best on the test, right? And if that intelligence is an A, then glory to God, right? But I think what we have to do as disciples of Christ, and I don't mean denominationally, I mean personal believers who walk in faith, with Jesus that we have to communicate with God. Because when we start to put things on our own shoulders and make decisions our own way, we've left God out of the picture. And then we try to be the creator. And we weren't meant to be the creator. And so what Jesus is saying, guys, no matter what you're going to walk through in your life, you have to remember that God is in your mess. Any of you have messes in your life right now? You don't have to raise your hand. We all have messes in our lives right now. We all have issues that we need God's answer to. That we need God's leading to. But we need to be persistent. Let's put persistency in a different way. I had the pleasure of going home to my old college football stadium. And they've renovated the stadium, and it's a bowl. It sits way down in the garden. I mean, it is a cool stadium. And they've renovated the stadium, and the local high schools use it now. The college built a new fancy stadium. But this one's been renovated, and I had the pleasure of going back to Buffalo Stadium and, and sitting in the bleachers of Buffalo Stadium. And I got to watch. I was watching West Plains High School play the Leveland Lobos. But the highlight for me was I had a little five-year-old granddaughter who was cheering was the varsity cheerleaders. And there were 225 little cheerleaders from kindergarten to sixth grade lined up on the sideline. And out of those 225 little cheerleaders who were supposed to be cheering with the high school cheerleaders, my granddaughter was in there somewhere. Of course, we're up in the bleachers and we're looking, where is she? You know, you know how grandparents are. Where is she? Where is she? Get a video. Where is she? It's the most important thing in her life, right? So I find her, and I'm just so elated, and I'm trying to put my phone up and take a picture. She's so far away, you can't even tell who she is. But I'm trying to put, like a good granddad, I'm putting my phone up there, and I'm zooming it, and I'm trying to take a picture, and people are looking at me because I have my phone up. And there's this little girl who's next to her, and my little girl's doing her thing. <laughs> right? But there's this little girl who's next to her, she keeps going right in front of my little girl. And so my little girl will move and the other girl will step over there in front of her. 
There was something about each one of those little girls, and if you looked across the whole crowd, it was happening to all 225. They were in a competition to see who could be seen. In fact, I looked up one time, and they had moved the cheerleaders to this one part of the sideline, and there was this trainer's tent. You know, the tent they put up now because the, the athletic trainer needs his tent and his shade. They had stuck my girl right behind that tent, and her papa couldn't see her. So I started to get up and move so I could see my girl and stand in front of everybody else's parents. Isn't there something to be said that there's an innate need in us to be seen? To be seen. Every one of those little K through 6th grade 225 cheerleaders doing their things all at a different beat <laughs> into different words because they don't really get it all yet. They were all cheerleading. But they wanted to be seen. Is that any different than the persistent widow? She wanted to be seen and to be heard. She wasn't seen by society because there was no one standing in the court professing for her. She was having to fight her own battle. It's just like those little girls on the sideline, each one wanting to be the gleam in their mother and daddy's eyes or their grandparents' eyes so that the picture could be taken and the video could be made and we could post it on Facebook and social media and it would all look like everything was perfect and wonderful when it was really just a scramble down there on the sideline. But there's an effort in us, there's a need in us to be seen and to be heard and to especially be seen and to be heard by God. But the problem is, the only way we know we are seen or heard by God is by answered prayer. Too many of us count on us being seen or heard by God by the evidence of answered prayer in our lives. God must not know me. God must not see me. My wish list isn't getting filled. Maybe I'm not saying the right things. I have people all the time want to know, why doesn't God answer my prayer? God does. It may not be the way you want it to be, but God has answered your prayer. And God answers your prayer in God's own time. Because Isaiah 55, 18 says, my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways. God works in a different level than we do. God works on a different plane than we do. God moves when God needs to move. God hears our prayers. God cares about us. And God wants us to cry out. God wants us to, to give our heart to God, to give our mind to God, to give our actions to God, to pray. It's the love communication with God is prayer. But not only are we supposed to talk to God, we're supposed to listen to God. We're supposed to listen to God. Be pers persistent enough in your prayer life that you take just as much time listening for God as you do speaking to God. How many of us do that? It's a relationship. One of the things I've really tried to do in the last month is put my electronics away and pay attention to the people who are in the room. I caught myself this weekend at my grandkids' house and the football was on the TV. And I won't tell you exactly who we were watching, but they won. My football team was on the TV. <laughs> And my phone was in my hand because I was keeping up with stats and all that stuff. And the whole time I watched out of the corner of my eye, one of my grandkids running around to each adult trying to get their attention. And I looked up in the room, and all adults but one were on their electronics. We were watching the TV. We had our phones. We were keeping stats. We were talking amongst each other. And there was a kid running around in the room trying to get our attention. So I finally put my phone up and I grabbed that kid and I began to wrestle with that kid until that kid decided he didn't want to sit in my lap anymore. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm kidding. But we have to be pers persistent. He never gave up. And the little cheerleader that was trying to be seen never gave up. They were persistent in believing one thing, that there was somebody out there who loved them enough to be present to watch them do what they do. <coughs> the widow was persistent enough to know that the judge was the one who could give her what she needed in her life. How many of us are like that with God? How many of us walk out of here on a Sunday and we go through our Monday through our Saturday and we petition God? We have a conversation with God. 
we speak with God every day in every situation of our lives. What situation in your life doesn't deem God's conversation? Is there one? Is there a conversation? Is there something happening in your life that you're not willing to talk to God about? Is there something you're shameful that you don't want to lift up to God? You know what? God wants that. God wants you to be just as persistent in confessing your sin and talking to God. God, show me a way out of this. Show me, I'm tempted, God, and I don't know how to get out of here. Give me an answer. God will provide us. The scripture tells us that God will provide us a way out. We shouldn't be tempted more than we can bear, and in our bearing, God will give us a way out of our sin. But we have to pray to God. We have to communicate. What about in our successes? What about when we're doing good in life and everything's going great in life? Are we to petition God or do we just walk up and say, did that one. Yeah, buddy. Right? Close that deal. I made an A on that test. Look at me. Right? Look at me. When what we should be is giving glory back to God. Thank you, God, for giving me the skills to do that. Thank you, God, for allowing me to be smart enough to pass that test. Giving me the insight. Giving me a clear enough mind. Thank you, God, for helping my wife and I resolve the problem that had come between us. Thank you for giving me humility enough to be, not be so arrogant as I usually am. Right? Those kind of things we need to talk to God about. God wants in the intimacy of our life. Because our life is supposed to reflect our faith. You hear me? The persistent widow believed that the judge had the answer to her problem. Who do you believe in? You say you believe in Jesus Christ, but do you turn all of life to Jesus Christ? Do you turn all, all of your life? I'm not talking about Sunday morning. Okay, we get it. You're here on Sunday morning. Okay, good. But if out there doesn't reflect what this stands for, what does it matter? Because there will be a day coming. Do you hear the last part of this text? There will be a day when God will bring justice and he will bring it quickly. Two women will be standing in a garden. One will be gone and one will not. Two men will be sitting at a table. One will be gone and one will not. That's what the text says. God will move quickly and justly in our lives. If we believe. If we're persistent in our crying out to God. But here's the big question. Do we have enough faith? Do we have enough faith to give all of our life to God? I'm not talking about Sunday morning worship. I'm talking about that deep, dark stuff that you're not going to talk to anybody about. That stuff that runs through your brain. That stuff you wrestle with that you know you're wrestling with. That stuff you do that's wrong that you know that's wrong. That stuff that dishonors God that you know dishonors God. That you need to turn that over to God. And you need to have conversation with God every day of the week in every situation. You should be petitioning God to bring justice into the world. And part of that justice is salvation in your life. Part of that justice is redemption in your life. Part of that justice is forgiveness in your life. And then if you are forgiven and you've reached redemption in that, then you can step and you can make a difference in somebody else's life to help bring justice in their life. And I've always wondered about this next phrase. Because I believe in Jesus and I believe in a strong, stout Jesus that walked with his people and he led with a compassionate hand, but he was very direct and in guiding them. He said, the Son of Man will return. But will we find an anyone with faith? Will he find faith in human creation? Will we have given up by, on God by the time the Son of Man comes again? When we have taken, tried to take things into our hands, so much so that God is non-existent, that God is just a superficial thing we, we dress up and do every week, my granddaughter loves cheerleaders, but it's not who my granddaughter is. 
My granddaughter is this cute, compassionate, wonderful, funny, ornery, too much like her papa kind of girl. But it gives the sweetest hugs and will not end the conversation without saying, I love you. At five years old, I love you. It's one of her greatest phrases. And she hugs you with these big, strong hugs for a little girl. And her heart pours out to you when she loves her. But she loves to be a cheerleader. And she loves to wear the light blue and the navy blue of the West Plains wolves. But it doesn't define who she is. My prayer for her is that she'll always understand how God created her. And no matter where she's seen amongst the rest of the cheerleaders, no matter if somebody else stands in her way, that she'll always believe and have faith enough to know of what her importance is to bring justice to this world. To bring justice and kindness to this world through her faith in Jesus Christ. I wonder if the same is for us. If we can take off the mask we wear. And we can allow ourselves to be persistent enough with God that we allow God to move quickly in our lives. And to bring justice into our lives. So that when Jesus comes again, we will be defined as a person of faith. We say we believe. But do we exhibit faith? <coughs> Let us go from here being persistent in our faith. Amen. Amen.